Hi, Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these super cute mug ornaments. Now, they could be for coffee mug, cocoa mug, tea mug. It's just a really cute ornament. And what's really neat about it is it is made two sides, so you can slide a gift card down inside. It makes a really nice gift tag as well. They're super easy to make, super fun, and it's a great way to use up some of those extra sparkle yarns if you want to, or any color yarns for that matter. And then we add a fun little button, and they're just super cute and super easy. Now for people like me who love coffee, this is a perfect gift. Someone who loves a hot cocoa mug or a mug of nice tea. This makes a nice ornament or gift tag. And then, like I said, you can hide a little gift card inside. <laughs> now, you can find this complete pattern on my blog. And as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make some of these mugs that are ornaments, gift card holders, you just need some medium weight number four yarn. I don't even think it takes a half an ounce to make it. Um, I'm going to be using this bright green for the main portion of my mug, and then I'll use the pink for the accent colors. All right, um, medium weight number four. I'm using acrylic. You can use any yarns that you want. Again, I love the sparkle, but it kind of plays with my camera a little bit. And so we're sticking with this bright green and bright pink. All right, you're gonna need a button or some sort of embellishment. This is a flat back, so I put it on with, with hot glue. But this one was a button, and I'm gonna use this one since it has that nice bright green tree for, I think it will look good with this. All right, but of course, embellishment is up to you. You can do bows. You can do whatever that you want to for embellishment on yours. I just really love adding Christmas buttons. Now, for the hanger on the top, we added four of the small pony beads, but you can use any beads that you have on hand. I'm using these pink and green ones since I'm using pink and green yarns. All right, then you need a needle for weaving in ends and, of course, putting those beads on and then a pair of scissors. And then, of course, you need your crochet hook. We're stitching today with an H, which is a five millimeter crochet hook. And that's all you need. Now, this is a great stash buster. So get in your old Christmas yarns or even your regular yarns and see what combinations you can come up. This is a great gift, even if it isn't Christmas. For someone who loves coffee or tea and you want to give them a gift card, make it in their favorite colors and you've got a birthday gift. Or if you want to give them a housewarming gift, make it in their kitchen colors and give them a gift card to someplace like Lowe's where they can pick up some needs for their home. So it has lots of possibilities, not just for Christmas. Although I need three because I'm making one for each of my grandkids. All right, let's get started. We're going to begin with our main color and make our slip knot and chain 10. All right, so I've got 10 chains. We're going to go in the second chain from the hook and stitch a single crochet. And then we'll stitch one single crochet in each of the chains working all the way across our chain. We are starting at the bottom of our mug and working our way up. All right, I'm going to chain one, and you should have nine single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine single crochets, because we started in the second chain from the hook. We're gonna chain one and turn. We've chained one, we're going to turn our work, and in this very first single crochet, we're going to stitch two single crochets, one and two. Our chain one does not count as a stitch, it's just a turning chain. We're going to stitch a single crochet in each of those single crochets, working across, 
and when we reach that last single crochet, we're going to stitch two instead of one. So here's my last one. We're going to stitch two single crochets, one and two and chain one. So now we went from having nine single crochets in row one to having 11 single crochets in row two. We chained one, we turned, and now we're gonna go right in that first single crochet and stitch one single crochet in each of those single crochets across. All right, chain one. So we have 11 single crochets because we began in the first stitch and stitched one in each across. Chain one and turn. And now we're going to repeat this for two more rows. We're going to stitch one single crochet in each of our stitches across, chain one and turn for two more rows. I stitch those two additional rows. Both those rows have 11 single crochets because again, we're not adding or subtracting. And you'll notice that it has a slight curve because on the first row we had nine single crochets. Then on row two, we increase to 11. And then we have 11 on our next few rows. And this is how it should look after R5. Now I did not chain one because we're going to be bringing in our next color and we want to make sure that we do that chain one in our next color. So I'm bringing in the pink, snugging that down, and then chaining one. We're going to turn our work. We're not going to cut off our color one. We're going to stitch over it and I'm also going to stitch over my pink tail. That way I can uh, weave that in later but it gets it off the edge, okay? So we're gonna go around those two strands of yarn and stitch one single crochet in each of the single crochets across. All right, now I'm gonna drop my pink one then because I, I wanna have enough where I can weave that in with my needle, but we're gonna continue to stitch over the green one, which is our main color, across our row. And this is because we're going to switch back to our green um, color or our color one after just one row. And if we didn't stitch across it, we would have to cut it here and reattach over here. All right, so we have one row of just the pink. And we're not going to chain one because we're going to switch to our main color. All right. And this is how it looks on the front. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring back in our green. We're going to drop our pink because when we bring it back in, it'll be on this side and we can just carry that up. All right. All right. So we're going to turn chain one in our green or our color one, start right in that first stitch and just stitch one single crochet in each of those single crochets across. This pattern is super easy, super quick, and mostly stitched in single crochets. and chain one. And see, one thing you'll notice that happens is this end right here is gonna curl up on you a little bit. It's okay because remember, we're going to make two of the cups, put them together and stitch around it, and that will make that corner lay down like it's supposed to. So we stitched one in each of those across. We still have 11. Chain one, and what we're going to do is we're going to repeat row seven 
for five more rows and that's the center portion chain one and turn we leave our pink attached but we're not using it for these next five rows and so we're just going to stitch one single crochet in each of the single crochets across chain one turn for five more rows I have added those five additional rows so we have six rows in between so what we're going to do is I did not chain one we're going to bring up our pink yarn or our color two, whichever color you're using and you want to make sure that it's not draping but you don't want it pulling either to pucker up the side of your cup all right so here's chain one and we're just going to repeat what we did down here we're going to stitch over the pink and the green of course the pink we're using so we're stitching over the green we don't have a tail of yarn of the pink so we're not stitching over the pink tail and again we're stitching over that green yarn <clears throat> because it keeps us from having to cut and then reattach on the other end all right so I'm going to go ahead and chain or bring in my green and chain one now we're finished with the pink at this point and so we're going to go ahead and cut this and we'll have to uh, weave this in with our needle later but I want to show you on the back before we do the next row the reason we stitched over it here is it brings it into the center and not on the end and it makes it easier to weave in all right and then with this when we put the two pieces together we'll stitch right over that and you won't even see it all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn I'm going to put my pink tail of yarn across and we're going to stitch that one single crochet in each of those across but I'm stitching over that pink tail for a few stitches just to get it out of the way now remember you're going to need to come back in and finish weaving that in so it stays secure all right so I just did a few stitches I'm going to drop that and finish on across with my main color so I stitched that across I'm going to chain one and just stitch one single crochet in each of the single crochets across alrighty now on the first one since we're making two you'll cut your yarn and weave that in on the second one you want to leave that yarn attached you're going to need to repeat what we just did one more time on the first one go ahead and weave in all the ends on the second one weave in all the ends like I have only leave your yarn attached all right and so what you're going to do is you're going to put the fronts and backs together and those stripes help us line everything up okay so we're over here on this side we're going to go right in the first stitch here and the first stitch on this side and stitch a single crochet and what we're going to do is we're going to evenly single crochet down around and back up all right I want to show you what to do when we get to that edge where we have this lined up and you'll notice it's on this side over here because we're doing front to back alright so we make sure our pink stripe is lined up and when this is here you just stitch right over it And when you're doing single crochets it's a lot easier than some of the other stitches when it comes to stitching around because you can go right in the ends of each row and it keeps everything nice and lined up 
see my pink rows are lined up. All right, we'll just keep going down around here. I want to show you when we curve around, you do the best you can. Be careful because there's not really a set amount of stitch you need, stitches you need. You just want it to line up and look pretty. And when we get down here at the bottom, we have those chains where we started and we can stitch right in those. All right, and how that gives like a nice natural curve. All right, and then we'll do this and come back up here, but don't tie off because we're going to make that little handle on our mug. So we're just going to continue evenly single crocheting around our mug. I have evenly single crocheted all the way around. You can see how it has this nice curve on the corners all the way back up. So now what we're going to do is chain one and turn and we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches. And now we're going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now we're going to join to our six, which is right here at our pink with a slip stitch. Then we'll slip stitch in the next one and chain one. And that's the beginning of our handle. All right, so now we're going to turn and we're going to go right to the chain 10 and we're going to single crochet 12 times around it. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now you'll notice I pushed some down a little bit just to make sure they're on there evenly. And now we're just going to slip stitch in that next stitch. Cut our yarn and tie off. And we'll just go ahead and weave that in so it looks nice and neat. And make sure you come down a little because so, you want to pull that handle down a little so it starts to make it kind of arch out. So we want it to be a nice big handle. Alrighty. All right, so here is just our coffee cup with our little pouch that we can put money inside or a gift card. But I like to add a little button or something just to make it extra Christmassy. All right, so I'm just going to grab some of the green yarn. Thread my needle and sew this on. I like to center it. So I'm going to make that little loop I always do. It's just something I started doing with crochet because I think it helps the, the button stay put better. There we go. Now, if you want to use a hot glue or another glue on this, you certainly can. Make sure you don't sew it across. You want to leave this pocket open, okay? So I'm going to go inside. I'll just grab my hook and pull that other string. And then we'll just tie that securely. And then the last thing we have to add is the hanger. So you can hang it on a gift, on the tree, or just for decoration. So the hanger's super easy to make. I take my crochet hook and I'm going to go right up in here, grab that yarn, and I always cut more than I need. I'd rather have too much than not enough. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little knot, and then I'm going to pick up that needle I dropped, 
<laughs> got it. <laughs> so we made our little knot right there. Now we're going to take both strands of our yarn and I fold them over real tight over the needle like that and then gently push them through because we have to have both strands of our yarn. All right, so I'm going to take a green, a pink, a green, a pink. It's up to you how you do your beads. You can add more beads, less beads. It's just a fun thing to put on the hanger. All right, we're done with the needle so we can take that off. We're gonna tie a knot. And this is a typical way that I make these hangers all the time. Nothing special. Then we're gonna move up a little bit and tie another knot. And that just gives us something. We can use this as a hanger or we can add it to one of our metal hangers that we normally use. All right, so now I've got a fun and fancy coffee cup with a little hanger. So here is the three that I have made. I've got one for each of my grandkids, Aiden, Zoe, Callie. <laughs> and I can slide a gift card for any of their favorite restaurants or places to shop, or if they'd rather have some money, I can fold that up and put it inside. If you're giving this to somebody who loves tea, get their favorite tea bags and slide some of them inside. Or a, a note that says, I love you, or maybe I'll slide one in Aiden's that says, Aiden, you're my favorite grandson, since he's my only grandson. <laughs> this is just a really fun project, and it's anybody who loves cocoa, tea, or coffee will enjoy getting one of these fun Christmas mugs to hang on their tree. Thank you.